when the uh, summer half of the international civilizations and the remaining of the world order is a very, very well known book. It's informed the kind of neoconservative policies uh, of George Bush and Co. Uh, yeah, it's about, you know, do you know the book or not? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's a book by a political scientist uh, who is now there who used to uh, teach at Harvard University. He first published it as an article in Foreign Policy, which is a very, very influential uh, journal in, in the States, led by politicians and people of Congress. And basically, his thesis is that we've uh, gone past the period of wars of ideologies, so the issue now is not communism versus capitalism. It's about the clash of civilizations, uh, and he divided the world into eight civilizations, I think, and one of them is the Islamic, Islamic civilization, one of them is the Judeo-Christian civilization. At the end of the day, it's all a fight between the Islamic civilization and the Judeo-Christian civilization, and unlike communism and, and capitalism, in the past you could be Russian, but you could be, not believe in communism, and you could be a capitalist, but with the clash of civilization, if you're born a Muslim, bad luck. There's no way out for you. <laughs> you know, that's kind of... He actually says that uh, Islam is inherently violent. He says Islam has no rules. Yeah. So that's the kind of, that's the, the kind of discourse of Jeffrey. And uh, the translators engaged with it quite extensively in all kinds of venues. Uh, one of them has two introductions, not one. Uh, one of them has an introduction of 46 pages. Huh? 46 Loads of it of footnotes, uh, they could express that they could warn the people about this kind of discourse, they could express their own. Oh, thank you for most fascinating lectures. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, in all of your lectures that I was lucky enough to attend, uh, I always uh, get the feeling of uh, uh, that uh, it is a bit complex. I always <laughs> express that of, of the concept of complex. And, uh, and in and my sorry. attempt to control the uncontrollable, I always ask them to myself simple questions like what the MA student of that uh, intended program would be able to tell or do after finishing that program. Okay. Okay. Um, I think, do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, obviously, this has to be uh, kind of finalized in negotiation with Cairo uh, University College because we haven't had our meeting yet. But my uh, provision thoughts on this is that uh, this masters can produce two types of people. One, uh, and, and they're not mutually exclusive, by the way, but one would be people who actually want to work as translators. As we know, certainly in the Arab world, all kinds of people work as translators who do not have any in translation. People do an MA in literature, they go out and become translators, right? So the fact that this MA may or may not include uh, an actual practical translation experience doesn't mean that people who take it cannot go out and, and work as translators. So that could be one type. Another type, and I see this happening with our MA. Our MA has two, uh, has uh, kind of prepares people for two types of careers with series of options. Uh, one is a vocational career, uh, but we still we still force them to do critical reflection. I think that. Uh, Translators who uh, are not trained in critical reflection are a danger to themselves and to society, actually. So uh, uh, many of them do end up being uh, vocational translators, uh, you know, actual professional translators. And some don't really necessarily want to go out and work as professional translators, but they want to, uh, to be able to carry on to do a PhD in translation. And they want to carry on and go on to be academics, for example, for example or uh, advisors, consultants on projects that involve translation where they don't necessarily translate themselves, but they have the ability and the understanding of what's involved in translation to act as uh, consultants and advisors. So our students go out and do all kinds of things. I think the same way can also prepare students to do a wide range of things, not just to do practical translation. But whatever they do, I hope that they will be alert to the politics and ethics. I would just say that one of the aims of tomorrow is to answer these questions. Yeah. And this is definitely what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. So, questions, comments? Okay. Um, it's just a comment, uh, I suppose, uh, when we talk about the media and uh, the news agencies, yes. I mean, it opened my mind to the societies that, for instance, you have too many human rights organizations based in Egypt that say, 
and they produce all sorts of complications that relate to human rights and development and all of that. And I think, I don't know what to do, if that could be factored in in that part because they're, they quite, are quite influential for certain sectors in society, particularly with people working in communities as well, and they do influence somehow with the publications that they produce uh, these communities, either from or into yes. the area. And of course, because we live in a globalized world, they connect with human rights organizations uh, outside Egypt, of yeah. course, and uh, that, that interaction takes place through some types of translation. And, and it really involves a lot of the ethical questions that you brought about. Absolutely. The masking and what the translators yeah. are. Yeah. The work yeah. One of the interesting new phenomena I've noticed is that also if you, uh, if you tweet, like me, um, you notice that a lot of people, a lot of people now, uh, uh, particularly those with a lot of followers all over the world, they tweet the same thing twice, once in English, once in Arabic. So that's also an act of translation which, with its own politics. And, yeah. Right, I think, yeah, okay, I think we can stop here and um, I think Professor Baker has given us a lot of food for thought. And we'll continue this discussion tomorrow, inshallah. And I hope I can see most of you tomorrow at the workshop because this is what we decide what to do for our MA at Cairo University. And I'd like to thank Hola uh, Baker and please join me in thanking her. Thank you.